Do you see the slide? Yes. yes. Good. So I guess I'll start then. Uh, what time was it? It's two minutes past. Okay. Uh, so this talk is about uh, what has happened for the iOS app recently. Things that I could remember that I had worked on myself, like in the last few months or so. Um, first bit out about myself, I guess. Uh, I have been working on LibreOffice for quite some time and and as Kendi mentioned, I started working on this cross comp cross compilation stuff already quite a long time ago. And then more or less now I, now and then about on it also since then. Uh, and here is our dog. First, something about the Collabora Office iOS app. It has been in the App Store since May last year. Uh, before that, it was available in test flight for maybe, I think, half a year or so. Uh, it was initially built only for iPad because that's what Adfinis or Adfinis's customers were using, and we didn't. In, uh, intentionally, we didn't even want it to be used on iPhone, but uh, allowing, it, allowing it on iPhone is just one selection in Xcode, so we'll change that then later. And uh, this was most or much funded by Adafinis, so a great thanks to them. Uh, as Kendi already mentioned, the iOS app has uh, the same UI, basically, as Collabora Online. And also the, the C++ code from, from Collabora Online that in a web-based online runs in the, on the server is also used in the, in the app. Plus, of course, much of the LibreOffice core code. This is all linked into one big executable. Well, the, the UI is, is, of course, JavaScript and not in the, in the executable. And uh, thus, we get all the same improvements to the UI as Collabora Online has also in the, in the app. And also the improvements to core LibreOffice. The core code is currently using a 6.2 based vendor branch, but it will soon switch to 6.4. And uh, of course, we also have like a lot of cherry picks from, from more recent upstream work. Uh, and I guess I need to point out that even if it's based on Collabora Online, there is like no online aspect of this. It all happens, all the editing happens locally on your device, and there is no server as there is for Col Collabora Online. But uh, the documents that you edit, they can be on a server if you want to, if you want to use iCloud or, or Nextcloud or some other uh, file provider extension. Uh, there are a few ones. I don't remember which they are now, but so that, that are probably quite well known. Uh, then again, the next cloud iOS app, when you use that and in, in that edit documents with Collabora Online, then you are actually using the uh, a normal Collabora Online server and, and the Collabora Online JavaScript code is inside the next cloud app and talking to to the server, but that's the different thing. And here is a picture from London, the canal there. So the first thing I'm talking about is uh, keyboard things. Uh, the handling of the keyboard in this JavaScript is quite complicated and hard to get right. 
there were several issues with it. And uh, it was like an endless, endless struggle to get it to work the right way. So the solution then was to write a small piece of native iOS code in Objective C that we came up with this long name for. Uh, and the background about keyboards in general, you can have several types of types of keyboards. You can have an on-screen keyboard, which on iPhone, of course, is quite small. Basically, just the letters and spacebar, and that's it. And on iPad, it's it's much larger. There you have a. Do you see my cursor? By the way, by the way, if I move the cursor, so I can point out something. On iPad, you have this toolbar or whatever it should be called here above, where you have some uh, buttons for for undo and redo and and uh, paste and copy. And there is also this button here in, or key here in the right lower hand corner for dismissing the keyboard. And uh, above the keys, you also get these uh, word competition suggestions that you can tap if you type some word partially. Then you can also have hardware keyboards. You can have these uh, Bluetooth keyboards that there are lots of models to choose from and they all work more or less equally well. And then you can have a hardware keyboard that is actually electrically attached to the iPad. It uses a so-called smart connector, which are is a, it's not the lightning or USB-C USB -C thing that you otherwise connect other things to iPad through, but it's a smaller connector on the back side. And Apple has two models. The one in the picture is the cheaper one, smart keyboard folio. And then they have this new magic keyboard, which is, is much more expensive and, and uh, supposed to be better, but I personally like, think I like this model better. Uh, now, the on-screen keyboard in less compli complex cases, it's it's supposed to work so that when you like tap in some text field, the on-screen keyboard shows up and you then type into it. But uh, Collabora Online is quite more complicated, both when you use it in a browser and when you use it in the Collabora Office app. So there were all kinds of issues. Uh, one very common thing was that uh, you got the keyboard showing even if you didn't actually do any text input. Uh, and that was a bit distracting because it takes so much space, at least, especially on, on the iPhone. I must say, tell my wife to turn down the music. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, on the iPad, it is also quite large, so it takes much space, so you don't want it if it's not necessary. And on the iPad, you can easily dismiss the on screen keyboard. It's not so easy on an iPhone. I guess there is something, but I haven't looked it up, up actually. And also, even more annoying was when you didn't get the keyboard even if you needed it. Uh, usually, if you just tapped around in the UI in different places, you got it eventually, but it's a bit painful. And uh, the Collabora Online JavaScript code handles the keyboard so that it uh, it has this uh, text field that is not visible but still there in, on the page 
and it uh, calls the focus and blur functions of that to to get the keyboard to show and go away and it works to some extent but not always and there was a never ending struggle to keep this working as intended so now for the iOS app we don't do this focus and blur dance anymore we instead call call this uh, native iOS code this collaborate online web view keyboard manager to display or hide the keyboard uh, and this is a separate thing in a separate repository because our idea was that, was that it would be used also by by the next cloud iOS app. Uh, in theory, this uh, piece of code is quite simple, but in practice there were some some complications. Uh, for instance, the JavaScript code sends quite a lot of these display and hide requests it does that also when using online in a web browser but uh, I guess typically it works out well anyway and you don't notice it but in the in the iOS app the end result, the end result was that you could see the keyboard like appearing for a split second and going away and then appearing again and stuff like that. Uh, and this uh, piece of code uses a thing called a UI text view that uh, uh, an iOS control and it calls that to display the on screen keyboard. Uh, one benefit of using this UI text view is that you get these word competition suggestions it's based on what you have typed only into that keyboard instance because uh, we don't send any information about the text context where you are typing to the code yet but we could do that, do that. Mm. Another benefit that was actually not even expected was that handling of these uh, keyboard shortcuts on a hardware keyboard is much easier now. On a software key on screen keyboard, you don't have these, but hardware keyboards have them. Uh, it used to be that the handling of these uh, command A, command C, and so etc. was often broken because uh, it's hard to prevent stuff from regressing when you don't test on all platforms all the time. But now we patch these shortcuts in the native iOS code and, and do the right thing there. And we actually could add more of them like command W to, to close the document and, and what other ones there might be. There is a picture of a boats, masts. Then another thing that I recently worked on was supporting password protected documents. Uh, this uses NSS. And uh, until recently, we hadn't built NSS at all for iOS or for Android because uh, we didn't realized what it was really used for or <laughs> didn't think about it and it seemed to work well enough even without it and also the way NSA is built is so so complicated and painful to modify that we didn't want to cross compile it unless necessary but then it became necessary and had to look into that uh, like for like Candy mentioned for Android, also for iOS, we build all the LibreOffice core 
and the external libraries statically, as uh, static libraries, archives. Uh, that's because originally, like back in, when was it, when this work started, you couldn't uh, include dynamic libraries in your iOS apps in the App Store. Nowadays you can, but they would anyway be, uh, would need to be repackaged a bit into frameworks. That's not hard, but it's like a bit pointless complication for no real gain. But NNS is a special snowflake. It couldn't be built completely statically because it insisted on loading a few libraries dynamically in any way. Even if it doesn't make any sense because, you know, in a use case like this, because you can't have any alternative, what do you call this? Well, whatever it is, whatever the thought is that you can use this dynamic, dynamic loading for have alternative, uh, what's the term, term they use, I don't remember. Anyway, that required some patching of NSS to, to link to these two libraries also statically. And here is a picture from my drone of an island. Uh, and then multitasking. This was also funded by Adfinis, so thanks to them. Uh, in the current, or I mean previous version of iOS, Apple came up this, with this multitasking UI. It means that you can have a sp split view on iPad. You can have two apps at the same time or, or two documents in the same app, but like separately. Or you can also have the same app open like in several uh, I think they are called workspaces. Uh, the thing you get when you swipe, swipe the three fingers from one side to another. It's like virtual desktops on Linux. And uh, this was in theory easy, but in practice hard to implement. The iOS specific code it's not complicated, you just had to add some new entries to the info.plist file and, and change the name of some methods in your code. But the hard problem was that uh, this C++ code in Collabora Online was not prepared to handle such a case at all because uh, in Collabora Online, web-based Collabora Online, you have a separate process for each document that, that, document that is open. Uh, that process then handles all the users that are editing at the same time. And this means that the code hadn't really been written so that it would properly handle multiple documents at the, at the same time and also Whenever nobody is editing a document anymore, the process just goes away, so it doesn't need to do any cleanups, really. And on the Collabora Online server, there are also this, this WSD process and the forklift process. But in the iOS app, all these, all the code for these processes, well, the, all the re relevant code for them is inside the same app process and that process lives until until the OS kills it if it's not used and and its resources are needed. Uh, and uh, the way this works in the iOS app and in the Android app is that we have lots of threads which communicate with, with each other in a way that kind of emulates the way these processes uh, communicate with each other using sockets on, on Linux. And this is quite fragile. 
but it worked amazingly well anyway. But now then with multitasking, when you have multiple documents open, uh, this didn't really work that well anymore because there were some global variables for uh, for the current document being edited and there was just one current document at each time and and things like that and we used some some boolean flag to indicate that we are shutting down and that then closed the, doc the document but if you have several documents you don't really want to close them all when when you close one and also inside LibreOffice Core, there were similar similar problems in LibreOffice Kit. And that's it. I hope you haven't all left. No, you are still there. <laughs> so you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. No questions? Okay. Well, thank you then. And I think there is a pause now until until 1400 hours.